You know there's always a party at the Port of Baltimore. Cruise ships going to exotic locations originate right here, and they're an important part of the many diverse uses of the deep water Port of Baltimore. What a tremendous asset we have here in the state of Maryland with the cruise terminal in our backyard. We have the best partners, Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, Carnival Cruise Lines. We have the travel agents that benefit from the business being here in the port, the stevedores, the taxi companies, International Longshoremen Association. We have the terminal operators, ship agents. There are so many jobs that's created by having the cruise here in, in the port. Cruising out of Baltimore, it is the gateway to your getaway. And now we would like for you to meet some of the people that make it work. We're gonna introduce you to the captain and to the chef. When you go on a cruise, food is everything. So please meet our chef. I started my career 17 years back, wherein I was, I, I came on board with, with the conception that I have to move forward because every day it was challenging. And it took me all these years to cover up and I gained more, more knowledge, got my promotions, got myself certified. I'm, I'm here right now today doing 17 years and it's fascinating. Every day, is, as I said, it's, it's, it's more knowledge, more experience, and that's something that keeps you going. It's, it's a passion, and, and what, what I love to do is more about teaching the people, giving my experience, and passing it to them, and, and they feel happy about it. And, and, and that's how we work together here, like a little family, cruising all the way, learning different things every day. We have three production galleys. This is deck number four, as we call it, the main production galley. In this galley on board the Grandio, we got 76 cooks. That includes our chef de parties, our chefs. I'm assisted with one executive sous chef, and I have four sous chefs for overseeing in terms of management, looking after the operation. We have two pastry chefs in our pastry shop and a team of seven professional pastry culinarians who are doing their best on a daily basis. And here I am doing a little bit of sort of a tasting. I'm, I'm, I'm making arabiata sauce. Arabetta versa, we're just simmering nice uh, succulent tomatoes in some nice olive oil with a shaved garlic. Well, we have a special lunch coming up very soon. So that's how we use always uh, disposable spoons to do our tasting. Wow, hey chef, chef. This is a little bit of a uh, touch of salt over here and touch of some fresh basil through before we just take it out. And that's what makes good food and really tasteful and you can really bring this experience and the taste to the table where our guests are dining. And here we are, we are moving forward, we are coming down to our pastry shop, which is, we always call on board, the sweetest, sweetest thing on board. And you can see tonight we have for our dinner, Boston cream pie. As you can see, they are stuffed up with, with rum and then they are all decorated with our chocolate, chocolate ganache with a treat of some white chocolate on top of it. And you see our pastry chef, who's a new hire, as you can see them, they're wearing a yellow scarf to identify that they're new hires on board, which is a good tool for us to identify and teach them what is right and what is wrong. So here, here he goes with his sharpest knife, cutting the Boston cream pie. Part of my job responsibility is also to check the fresh produce which comes on board, uh, especially something that is more perishable and gets spoiled towards the end. I would, I would check the quality of, of the fresh herbs and the berries which come on board. And we have our provision master, Mr. Elton, always assist us in, in delivering all the products and assisting my, my, my team up here. And we always work together, ensuring we have the, the, the right amount of commodity on board to cater to 2,400 guests and to ensure that we have it lasting all the, all the way for eight day cruise. Believe it or not, I'm sitting right here in a main galley in a, uh, for the grandeur of the seas. Uh, where you can actually dine in the galley and see all the action happening around you from the chefs to the waiters coming in and out of the main dining room picking up all the meals and taking them out to the main dining room this is a five course meal that includes wine pairing as well the grandeur of the seas is the only cruise ship that offers this experience now we're going to take you up on the bridge to meet the captain you could say that i have the overall responsibility for everything that's good and everything that's bad. So in general, you could say that I have a finger in absolutely everything that works on board. But naturally, since I'm a captain, my main responsibility is the safety and security of the people. If we are navigating in a safe manner, go from A to B in a safe manner, and make sure that people have a comfortable ride, as I used to call it. 
uh, all together on this ship we are approximately 800 crew members. And that is for the entire operation. If you're on a cargo ship, you're on a ship with maybe 20 people. If you're on a cruise ship, you're on a ship with several thousand people. It is more challenging in many, many ways, but it's also very giving. I guess you were expecting a big wheel, but it's just a small, tiny wheel you can use with one hand or one finger. And we are using that. Uh, quartermasters are staring. They can read up here and also here how the rudders are. We have two rudders on board here, and we can use them independently or we can use them paired together. You can say normally we use them uh, paired together, but in given situations, then we are using them individually. But when we are doing it individually, using them, for instance, during a maneuver, then uh, I'm taking control over there at the main console. I have my friend here, Fritz the monkey. And the reason for that I have Fritz the monkey here is that there are so many things to take care of. If I go back here to this conning station, I used to say, here is one monkey, here is two monkeys. And then I had the thrusters, three monkeys, four monkeys, five monkeys. And I then have the rudders, six monkeys. And the more monkeys I have on my back, the more difficult it is. And it's very important that when you are dealing with all this stuff, that you manage to keep the simplicity and also keep the basics in what you're doing. Because what you are dealing with there, despite all the electronics, it all comes down to physics. And it is so important that you never forget that. And that is maybe one of the reasons why uh, you can't just sit and play video games and then start to do this. You really need to have an understanding of uh, what's going on in order to operate it.